Welcome to the build log number 8 video. In this video we'll look at design updates, print speeds and Orarum's PETG filament. In the last video I mentioned that the y-axis was only able to move 170 millimeters uh, from the end stop at the front to the rear at the frame. I was 30 millimeters short of attaining the 200 millimeter uh, print area on the y-axis. Well, after the modifications I've made to the z-axis and also to the left motor end stop, I was able to finally get 200 millimeters uh, print distance on the y-axis. And to start off with, you'll see I've moved the uh, z-axis, or sorry, z-axis stepper motor up to the top of the aluminium extrusion. So I've only moved the motor back 10 millimeters, but that's now raised also this motor mount, which allows the entire X carriage to fit underneath. I've also had to move the uh, linear guide rails back about three millimeters and also the uh, Z nut holder has also been moved back about seven millimeters. So all up I've been able to uh, gain 20 millimeters in travel on the rear. As you can see the print head is virtually on the edge here and moving to the front of the printer looking at the left motor mount you can see I've integrated the y-axis end stop get that to focus I integrated the y-axis end stop to within the motor mount I'll just slide that out briefly so this this part here has been redesigned so there's a there's like a groove or a gap for the end stop to to easily slide slide into and that, uh, that rests on the back of the, of the motor mount there. And now when the Y-axis homes, it homes all the way to the front. And I'll just move that forward now so you can see how close I get. Activated. And there you see, the nozzle is pretty much at the front of the build platform. Looking at the base of the 3D printer, I've redesigned the lead screw uh, holder. So this part is much sturdier than the previous part I was using. The flange bearing is still embedded within the, the lead screw holder uh, down there. So the entire lead screw, the, the bed, everything is kind of resting on that flange bearing in there. Uh, I'm still using the shorter lead screw. This is still the 250 millimeter length lead screw. I'm waiting on Banggood to deliver me the 300 millimeter lead screw that I've purchased. Uh, in that same package, I'm also waiting for the T-slot nuts to arrive so I can finally finish assembling this, this frame. But in the meantime, uh, I've been able to get this to work because I've raised the rear aluminium uh, extrusion up by 50 millimeters. So everything's nice and secure and I'm able to print with pretty good quality. But obviously when the 300 millimeter lead screw arrives, I'll be able to drop this rear spar back down to where it should be. So the total print height for the Z axis with this configuration will be 170 millimeters in print height. That's enough for me. I think the tallest part I've printed in the past was 150 millimeters. So that, so the finished design on this printer is fine for me. If that wasn't enough for you, you could increase that by 50 millimeters by purchasing the next length up lead screw. So the next length up is 350 millimeters. And to accommodate that, you would also have to use longer uh, vertical aluminium extrusions here. So the one that I have on this frame, uh, th these are 350 millimeters in length. You would have to add 50 to these as well. So that would be 400, 400 millimeters in length. And that would net you uh, a total print height of 220 millimeters. It's totally customizable because um, these are just aluminium extrusions and I guess you're just limited to the length of the lead screw on, on the length of the aluminium extrusions that you would need. Looking at the rear of the X carriage, I've redesigned the belt tensioning mechanism of the X carriage uh, when I was replacing the XY joiners with the new uh, PETG uh, versions of these joiners. Uh, reattaching the belts was quite cumbersome with the old setup, so this setup is much easier and I'm glad I've actually made this change. Uh, this part here simply uh, unscrews and can be clamped down onto the belts. This also allows adjustments of the belts individually by just loosening uh, the screw to, to the nearest side of the belt and then you can either pull or, or push the, the belt on either side of here to increase tension or, or reduce tension. 
It's also much easier to install because you can just kind of half screw this clamp down so the belts won't slip out but they're very easy to move still. So installation now of the belts is much improved. Something quite strange that I've noticed with printing with this new 3D printer is the infill pattern has started to show on the perimeters of the printed part. So this is the left motor mount printed in purple PLA and you can see uh, a vertical line there, a vertical line there, another one here, another one here, another one here. That's the infill pattern coming through the perimeters. And this is interesting because I, I haven't changed the way that I slice uh, these parts before I print. Um, printing these parts on the Prusa i3 didn't show this particular phenomenon. So I've had to go into the slicing program, in this case I'm using Cura, and in the expert options I've enabled the infill prints after perimeters. So that will print the external perimeter first, then it will print the infill on that particular layer. Whereas previously it would print the infill first, followed by the perimeter. Now that I've gotten used to this printer over the last week, I've realised I can crank up the acceleration in Marlin. Last week I was printing the test pieces at 1000 millimetres per second, but I've realised it can go much higher. I've now doubled the acceleration to 2000 millimetres a second without any degradation in print quality. In fact, I've been printing up to 4000 millimetres a second uh, with only minor ringing artefacts appearing on corners. So this particular part here, I was printing this with an acceleration of uh, 2000 millimetres a second. I was printing the perimeters at 60 millimetres a second, but the non-print uh, moves, so the travel moves, all the way up to 150 mm millimetres a second. Here's some test footage, or here's some footage that I've uh, recorded from this part, and just see how fast the print moves are. And I've made substantial progress with uh, printing calibration cubes in regards to the surface print quality. This print cube here was printed quite fast, 50 millimeters a second, with an acceleration in Marlin at 2000 millimeters per second. And you'll see there are no ringing artifacts on the corners of this part. I'll, I'll show you every single corner here and, and shine it in the light. And it is absolutely clean. This is remarkable. This is a huge upgrade from what I'm used to. But uh, I said I printed this at 50, mm, 50 millimeters a second, which is you know quite fast for a hollow print cube. So I had the, the, the fan blowing at 100% to keep the plastic cool because the print head was coming around so often. But I thought, how fast can I actually print one uh, and without still not seeing any uh, artifacts? So this particular calibration cube here was printed at 80 millimeters a second and it was too fast for the cooling fan to cool down the corners so the, the corners have kind of curled and are showing so they're not as sharp as what they could be but I'll show you there's still no ringing so that this is at 80 millimeters a second and I've got some test footage of this that I'll put on the screen and I'm showing you each uh, side here. Now this particular corner here, you'll notice, and it's again it's only very faint, you might notice a bit of ringing there, but as you can see it's right next to uh, all these uh, corner pieces that have, that have uh, bowed up because the plastic was curling, it was too hot. Whenever the print head was coming around, the print head would get knocked uh, into, that, into that bulge and it would actually push down on the uh, on the build platform, and then when the print head uh, continued along its path, the bed would jump back up. So this particular pattern that we're seeing here is more of a z-axis artifact rather than a ringing artifact on the uh, XY moves. Well, Rarum have been kind enough to send a roll of their brand new PETG filament for me to review. So I'll do a review of this, but I'll also be using this filament for the actual completed parts on the 3D printer. I was going to use PETG uh, anyway instead of uh, ABS for the completed uh, print parts. So I might as well kill two birds with one stone here. And just like the previous Arara review, the plastic comes uh, packaged with a bag of desiccant uh, vacuum sealed. I've already been printing with this, so it's no longer vacuum sealed. But taking the filament out of the bag, uh, they've sent me the colour blue, and this is a really nice colour blue. It has a like a semi-gloss uh, type shine to it. This is 1.75 millimetre in diameter. And looking at the printing temperatures, this is something really strange. 
Printing temperature, anywhere between 195 degrees and 225. That's really low for PETG. But what that means is anyone can be able to print with this because it's, a, it's the same printing range as like a PLA plastic. Another bonus of printing in PETG over ABS is the bed temperature. I've been printing with this at 65 degrees Celsius and the parts haven't bowed. They've stayed perfectly flat while printing. Here's the rear of one of the XY joiners. You can see uh, the XY uh, joiner cap and also the XY joiner itself has been printed in this uh, blue PETG. It's a really nice color blue. Uh, it's like a navy blue, I guess you could say. Uh, it's come out really nice. I was printing these at quite a coarse resolution, uh, 0 025 millimeter layer height. And it was able to print these quite, quite fast. I was limiting my print speed to 50 millimeters a second. As I noticed, uh, any faster than, than say 60 millimeters a second, I noticed the filament kind of wasn't making contact with the previous layer. It was being dragged along. And just reading online, that seems quite common for PETG. You've got to print it at a, at a medium speed. So printing at 50 millimeters a second, I didn't have a problem with. And this material uh, is quite stiff and strong. I'll, I'll show you, uh, uh, in, in a moment, uh, the Peon 230 quadcopter arm that I'll, that I'll print, but um, just clamping these uh, 623 flange bearings into the XY joiner using the 20, mil 20 millimeter screw and the nylock nut, it's perfectly solid. There was no creaking. Uh, these parts were printed with a 50% infill. Very strong, very stiff, much stiffer than the PLA part that I had on here, although the PLA was only printed at 15%, mind you. Uh, so I've printed both the uh, XY joiners, that one and that one. I've also printed the uh, the latest X carriage also in the PETG. That also came out perfectly flat. So that was quite important that the part uh, finished perfectly flat on the build platform. If it had bowed, I, I wouldn't be able to mount the uh, E3D bowed mount correctly to the part, but uh, with a 65 degree build platform, uh, it stayed perfectly flat while printing, and also it stuck to the blue painter's tape just fine. I was really happy with the way that this, uh, this plastic prints on this new 3D printer. And the other pieces that I've completed printing are the Z carriages. Get that to focus. So I've Reprinted these Z carriages in the PETG, again printed at 50% infill, so they're much stiffer than the previous part. And I'll just pan around to the uh, back of this printer, and you'll see the clamps holding the bearings onto the Z, uh, sorry, Z carriage are also printed in, in PETG. I've redesigned these clamps uh, just a bit so there's just, just more meat to them. So that's also helped uh, with keeping the bed platform nice and stable. And here is the Peon 230 quadcopter arm printed in Orarum's PETG filament. And this printed absolutely fine. It came out perfect. There are no defects with this part. There was no problems with stringing while the part was printing. Uh, it printed at quite a low temperature for PETG, I thought. 210 degrees Celsius, which means anyone can print temperature-wise with any print head with this printer. Uh, I printed this on blue painter's tape and there was no issues with bowing or warping like you would get with 
uh, with like an ABS and just to prove that it hasn't bowed as such I'll use my metal ruler here to show you that there's no gaps there, it's perfectly flat. It's stuck down on the blue painter's tape just fine. I had the, uh, the heated bed set to 65 degrees Celsius. I have a set of scales here just to weigh uh, the weight of this particular part. So I'll turn the scales on, pan down so you can see that might help. Okay, tear the scales. Let's see what a solid PETG quadcopter arm weighs. 11.5 grams, not bad. Regular viewers to this channel will know that if I print a quadcopter arm with new material, such as Ararum's Pet G, it's because I want to test the strength of this part by breaking it. Uh, a quadcopter, if it crashes, will come under a lot of stress, and we want a part that is able to hold up under crash conditions with a quadcopter. So to start off with, I'll start with uh, just seeing if I can bend this by hand to, to check out the flexibility of this material. Uh, you can check out some of my other videos where I've tested various materials printing this exact same part. So I'll just try to bend this by hand and you'll see it is it is flexing but not not much. I mean that's that's as much flex as I'm gonna as I'm gonna give it by hand. It's uh, it's certainly not breaking and that amount of flex is good because in a crash condition that's going to absorb a lot of the energy uh, when the quad comes crashing down. So the next thing to do is, re is to find out where the actual fail happens. So I have my trusty hand tools here. So I'm going to simulate crashing this, uh, this quadcopter arm uh, intentionally, a catastrophic crash, and we'll see how long it takes to break, how much I need to bend it, and also what happens when I bend this. Here we go. Oh man, that's taking a lot of... Well, there it goes. Snapped probably on the weakest point of the quadcopter arm, which is right in those center gaps. That took a lot of force to do that. I'm quite surprised. Thanks to Ararum for sending me the PETG material to review. I'll be printing the rest of the uh, 3D printer parts with Ararum's uh, Blue Pet G. Um, as, as you've seen, I'm still iterating on some of the design choices. So you've seen I've moved the Z-axis stepper motor back and also the changes with the, the belt tensioner on the X carriage. So that's one of the reasons why I haven't released the STL files just yet for download. They're coming, they're not going to be too far away, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, but I'm definitely going to release the files for this printer, including the full bill of materials required, the, the length of the extrusions here. So sit tight, be patient, it is coming, and thanks for watching.